Oh my gosh, we're back. It's time for it another. Time. It's a code party. It's a code party. I gotta oh change goodness. hats. Hang on, friends. Let me change hats. There we go. Wow. Got the, it's the official, official code party hat. I didn't get a hat, but I got a mug. I got you one got of a mug. Mugs, yeah. What's the deal with the mug? Tell me about the mug. The deal with the mug is we were talking about all these cool code, or the key bindings that you can do, you know, the stuff that Kendra and Michaela were showing off. There's all these features that if you don't know the magic keys, you don't know how to do it, right? Or you might forget. Yeah, yeah. And so then we were like, you know what would be cool is if we had a mug. And so Christos and I got these mugs printed up for this event. So everybody can be more productive by, by taking their hands off of the mouse, keeping them on the keyboard so you can write more it's code It's double fast. the productivity because it teaches you the keyboard shortcuts and yes. you can put caffeine inside of the cup. So it's Love double, it's quadruple the productivity, really. <sighs> yeah. My name is Jeff Fritz. That's John Galloway. We're going to have some fun here. We have giveaways. We have raffles. We have... We got a bunch of fun we to have with stuff. you, friends. We also have a surprise demo from surprise Aaron. Surprise demo. Aaron from the keynote had too much good stuff. He actually wrote up some really cool stuff on the plane out here. And we're like, well, you got to show that off. So yes. we're actually going to part way through this. We'll cut over to him and he'll show off his uh, I can't believe it works demo. I so. can't believe it works demo. It's like <laughs> butter. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. <laughs> but it might work. It might not work. So, OK, we spent a full day learning about Visual Studio for Mac, Yep. right? All the cool things you could do, doesn't matter it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter what operating system if it's is visual. <laughs> well, partly, I mean, part of the idea is we've got teams yeah. that, you know, you may have some people working on Windows, you may have some people working on Mac, you may have one person over in the corner with, with Ubuntu, whatever. We want, want them all to work together. Yeah. And so having tools that work seamlessly together is important. And especially like having Visual Studio for Windows and Visual Studio for Mac feature support being, you know, like, sharing code between the editors, things like editor config, all that stuff. It's, it's not just folks doing .NET. It could be JavaScript, mm -hmm. right? It could be, uh, there's a handful of, of different technologies that you can use. Yep. But, you know, really for today, we did want to focus on .NET development. Like, that was, the idea is like, if you're doing .NET development on a Mac, Visual Studio for, for Mac, at this point, really is kind of the premier editor for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Let me take a look at what's going on over there in the chat room. Lucky number yeah. seven is here. Hello, hello. Dee Dee Walsh. Not only is she in the chat room, she's actually right she's here. She's in the real room. There's no donuts involved or needed. <laughs> she goes. How's it going? This reminds Grey Jedi of Tech TV for some reason. Um, I hope it is a little bit better than Tech TV. <laughs> Right? <laughs> that, uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Hugo Doll is here. Yes, absolutely. Let's see what else is going. Uh, who actually changes key bindings? I feel it's very confusing. Uh, you know what? That's well, a good point. It is a good point. So some people never change them, right? Yeah. You, you start up, you learn your thing, that's fine. Mm. If that's you, that's great. Other people, you may have come over from Visual Studio for Windows to Visual Studio for Mac, and there's actually a screen during the install. Yeah. And then later you can bring it up if you want to, where you can say, hey, I want to use key bindings that are the most like Visual Studio for Windows, or Visual Studio for Mac, or Writer, right? So you can pick, uh, okay. or, or Visual Studio Code, right? So you can use these kind of presets. Yeah. But then some people really like to go in and dial stuff in. I actually have had a few things where I was like, why isn't there, I do something a lot and there isn't a hotkey for it. I'm just going to go in and, you know, mm. control, alt, option, blah, 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 five. And, it, you know, and then it does something magic for me. You so. know, I, I, I could definitely use a hotkey to change fonts. Folks on my, on my stream, they like to ask me to change font and use papyrus no. for coding. <laughs> right? Like the, av the font from the movie Avatar, papyrus. I mean... You're going to write code with that? Come on now. But I Funny side story with fonts. Please, tell me. On Saturday, I was in, in town over the weekend. I went to coffee with Damien Gard, who built the Envy Code R font. He's, he's actually oh, yeah. made some coding fonts. Okay. And so we, I love to get him talking shop and just talking about fonts. And he, after a little prompting, he went down the street, and every street sign in view, he's like, See that? That's papyrus. That one is probably, well, it's a, it's a modified Helvetica. This is, and he went oh all, my every single side. I'm like, that's cool. And it probably also is probably a curse because you yeah. would notice. And he's like, oh, yeah, see that license plate there? The sender height is way off. And, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Wow. Hey, we should give away some stuff. Should we give away some stuff? Can we, can we give away our first trivia question? Can we start that? 
Sure. So I mean, I don't want to jump the gun, but we only have an yeah, hour to give a. Let's do it. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, here, look at this. Uh, uh, Beer Ad Moore got up at 4 a.m. to tune in from wow, Australia. Wow, that's Welcome dedication. In. Look at that. He, that's a person that needs a coffee cup. They need a coffee <laughs> cup. But I was, I thought we could ask a question for our, from our friends at Uno. This sounds good. All right. And what's the price from platform? Uno? The Uno prize is. Hold, uh, drum roll while I bring it up. We're looking up that prize. The prize from the. Oh, totally the best prize. We oh, should save the best fun. prize for last. We'll yeah. save it for last. We're going to come back Suspense. to Uno. Suspense. Should we? Wh what do you say? Then we go to Def Express. Let's do it. All so right. You skipped my prize then. It's a what? You skipped my prize then. Well, let's give away your prize. I don't have your question. It's the first question. But I don't, I don't have that question. Did it not show up on the spreadsheet? <laughs> oh no. It always oh. comes down to the spreadsheet. Yep. I know. All right, so. <laughs> let's start with Dev Express. All right, let's start with Dev Express. Okay. Uh, what, the price for Dev Express it is? is a hundred, oh my gosh, it's a hundred dollars. They outdid all of the rest of us. It's a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. So for a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody in the world can win this. Your question, your, <laughs> Your question is, name the package manager tool that allows simple installation of the Dev Express tools inside of Visual Studio for Mac. Hmm. First one in the chat room, it is not SharePoint. No. I'm keeping an eye on the chat room here. First person in the Twitch chat room that can tell us the package manager tool that allows simple installation of Dev Express tools inside VS for <laughs> Mac. Come on, who's got it? I've, there must be an answer coming in through. Here. No, it's not SharePoint. No, you can't use SharePoint. <laughs> Is it a NuGet package manager? Mm. Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's about. Suspense. It was. It looked it's like NuGet. So uh, is that uh, then Astra 6? Is that right? Uh, Who was the right? No, I think the first one was. Who was the first Admiral. one to give us NuGet? Uh, I think it was Beer. Uh, oh, no, it's, uh, oh, it's way up there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's right We're, below the first SharePoint. It was Beer, Beer Admore. Admore got it. Yeah. Is that the in one Australia. that got the Australia? That came through, paid yes. The early bird, <laughs> getting the worm. Oh, Staying yeah. up late so, and you got paid for it. So Congratulations. At Beer Admore. Well uh, done. There's our right. first trivia question. Maybe go All back right. to sleep. Yeah, you can go back to Pleasant sleep. Pleasant dreams on that. We're just going to be goofing around now for the rest of the time because we <laughs> sent a. Amazon card to Australia. Wow. Very nice. Congratulations to you. So, okay. So we talked a little bit about key bindings, that, but uh, I really like seeing the stuff about Blazor mm -hmm. with Visual Studio for Mac. There is so much happening with this framework. The excitement in the .NET community is uh, palpable. It is. It really is. It's, it's, um, it's really cool to have the option, you know, and it's like, I, I think that we have to squeeze things down into sound bites a little bit for presentations and keynotes and stuff. Sure. But really, I love the flexibility. It's built on, you know, open. It's built on web standards. Runs yes. on all the browsers. Yes. You don't have to use JavaScript, but you can. So it's not like an either or. It's like you can build with Blazor and you can integrate with existing JavaScript libraries if you want to. Right. Right. So it's it's kind of the best of everything. It. it I, I like that we've moved from, you. You can write and target HTML code mm -hmm. directly on the metal from your ASP.NET frameworks yeah. back to, well, here's a component-based development framework if you'd like to work that way as well. The whole component thing is really like a hidden gem mm -hmm. of Blazor. And it's something where at first people really focus on the JavaScript and, the, you know, like, oh, I can write C-sharp code and stuff. But then you think of it more and it's like, wow, I can have components. They can be installed via NuGet. The, you know, components can, like, simplified life cycle and you know all kinds of stuff it really um, brings down the complexity of building you know front end heavy applications so yeah our friend Golnez is trolling me <laughs> yes that's right wow. I've, got, I've got blue hair I've got that visual studio code <laughs> hair going on that's right that's impressive better believe it wow. yes 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 <laughs> it's happening there you go Golnez that's our yeah. friend um, well, it's, okay, so speaking of, of all those cool things you can do in the browser, here in the chat room is that, is that Dawida Bro writes, mm -hmm. long live Silverlight. Well, but Blazor's not it's like a, Silverlight. You know, it's, it's a, 
Yeah, it gets a reaction. It There's does. It brings in some of the things that made Silverlight cool, but it does it the right way, right? Silverlight was a browser plugin. Yes. It really depended if a browser supported things right. It would maybe work in one browser and not another, et cetera. What's really cool with Blazor is it's the front end is C sharp, or is excuse me, CSS, mm -hmm. JavaScript, HTML5, like it's standard. Web display. standard things. Every yeah. browser does this. Whoa. Hmm. And I it's guess that I'll time. decline that, yeah. Let's go ahead and decline that call. All right. <laughs> if you well, have John Galloway's yeah, phone number, ring it call now. Him ring now. it now. Okay, I'm looking for you, Scott Anselman. Give him a call. Um, <laughs> so mode. it's all these web standards things and WebAssembly. Yep. Right, and that's kind of the the thing that folks associate it most with Blazor. Yeah. WebAssembly you can code with in Visual Studio for Mac. Yeah. And it works in every browser. And right, we we have our friends uh, Spectre and Meltdown to thank for that one, right? Right. <laughs> like we can thank a problem, right? A, a processor flaw for forcing everybody to upgrade. How cool is that? <laughs> that we got even Grandma using the latest browser. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Pushing those browser standards. Oh the right my goodness! Way. The, and, I, and I say, grandma, my, my grandmother was very non-technical and was not uh, upgrading her hardware, her software regularly. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, I, I refer to. <laughs> Anyways, um, do we actually here? Look at this. Um, oh, it's our friend Fierce Kittens is in the chat room. Mm. Hello. Which browser am I supposed to hate today? Trick question. All of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thanks, John. Um, and uh, T Pro Senior asks, when can we expect a Visual Studio for mm. OS 2? Sorry. We'll, we'll take that back to the product team. Yeah. Is that what we Actually, say? <laughs> so, in all seriousness, um, friend, our friend, um, let me see, can I get that showing there? There we go. Our friend Scott Hanselman got Visual Studio Code working for Raspberry Pi and on Raspbian. So all the source code's available there. You could run VS Code in some of these other places. You're not going to get the full IDE like we have for Mac. Yeah. But... Somebody's going to hook it up to a terminal emulator and who knows what's going to happen next. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... So should we give something else away? Do we I have? I feel like we've got so much stuff to give away. We do have a lot of stuff to give away. So we did DevExpress. Um, what do you say Ooh, we go to? Well, you're answering. Well, you're figuring that out. Let me answer. Sides, 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 whatever is asking. What about integrated terminal support for VS for Mac? Okay, that's so a good feature. So it's on the roadmap for 8.6, which, which is supposed to ship in May. Now, when I said that during the keynote, some of the devs were like, "Oh, I guess I better get to work." So. But the plan is May. <laughs> so I can't wait for that feature, the, by the there, way. There might be a large Microsoft conference in May that we're yeah, building towards. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're building up to something there. I don't know. So lots of anticipation. Yeah. Yes, for that. yes. Um, yeah. All right, so what is, let's go to question number three from Lee Tools. How's that sound, Didi? Let's do it. All right, so the question from our well, friends. What are we giving Lee, away? What is the prize for Lead Tools? You get. You know, well, you know that they have like that document. Um, oh, sure. Lead Tools does all the great OCR features. So you get 2,500 free pages for Lead Ooh. Tools Cloud Services Web API, a $125 value. All right. So Very our nice. friends at Lead Tools would like to know which Lead Tools NuGet library could you reference to create a Xamarin or ASP.NET Core application in Visual Studio on the Mac that can OCR an image? and convert it to PDF. First person to get that right in the chat room, and in the Twitch chat room, will get, yeah, third question, we skipped the first one, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so we got some people frantically Googling that up. I yeah. Think. Those debug mugs, folks, folks like the mugs. All right, hmm. we, got, we got some answers coming in. What do you think, Dee? Do we have any correct answers yet? Oh, you know, we're, Did you want we're me to shuffling move? around a little bit here. Uh-oh, hang on. Things okay. are always changing when we, when we do these. Lots of things, moving pieces. We, we have to stay flexible, stay nimble as we go so through and take a look at all the different things that are going on here. All right, so our answer, ah, um, trying to hold everything is... Mm. 
You want the shirt from your earlier tweet. There was a shirt earlier? There is a Lead Tools OCR Nougat. Okay, yes. Did anybody answer that? Yes, I think, was that Genescu? I think. Genescu 7. Genescu 7. I think we, that's a, that's our, that's I think we've heard from him before. That's awesome. Congratulations. You just won, how many, how, what was it? $125 value. And it's yeah, a, 2,500 pages. 2,500 uh, pages of OCR. Yeah. That you're going to be able to use with lead tools. Wow. Nice. So, I may, oh, you know what? I think I got that wrong. Oh, no, no. Okay. Exoration got it first. It, because it turned it into a link. That's yeah. why it was hard for us to see. My apologies. Yep. So, sorry, Janesco. So, Janesco should get something else then. One of your... Well, at least a sticker pack, right? Yeah. Or, I think... Um, or, or a mug? I think you should give him a mug. Okay. Done. Sounds right. So, we'll so, ship out a mug to Janesco. Okay. So... There we go. Hey. Uh, uh, so, so who won the the... Lead tools? Uh, Exoration. X O R A T I O N. At X O R. Should we switch over to Aaron? Sure. Let's, let's see. You ready demo. to go, Aaron? Sure. I can talk about anything you want me to talk All about. All right. Let's go for it. So, the internet. How are you doing? It's Aaron <laughs> from EY, uh, tech lead. Uh, we do a lot of mobile stuff. It was really interesting. So not that long ago on the internet, I'll say in time, somewhere between three and five days ago, somebody had posted a Twitter question about, it'd be really great at Visual Studio for the Mac, you could build Mac applications. And the person was making it sound like you couldn't do that. And instantly I went, what? What? Wait a minute. Of course you can build Mac applications in Visual Studio for the Mac. In fact, that's probably one of the first things they had to do to build the product. So talking to John about this, I decided that in the last 48 hours, I would build a sample app that we could show off basically, and kind of show off the features of doing this. So I have literally Visual Studio for Mac open right now, and this is a Xamarin Mac application. Now, why would you want to do this? That's a wonderful question to ask. Well, one, the advantage is if you already know C Sharp, this is a beautiful way to make Mac applications. You already have all that knowledge of how to write applications, and if you're an iOS developer, Coming over to write a Mac application isn't that scary, especially if you're Xamarin iOS specifically, because a lot of the objects were kind of came from the, the toolkits called AppKit. And the toolkit over in iOS is called, um, uh, it's toolkit, they kind of similarize themselves in many ways. In fact, if you ever see the NS name in front of an object, a lot of times that's the same name over on the Mac side. So the second advantage that you could do, and if you want to do this, is that you could have a shared code library. So say, for example, in the project I have open here, if we were to look on the left, you'll see that this top library I have, that's a core library. I could share that code between a UWP application, a WPF application, a HoloLens application. It really doesn't matter because it's a .NET standard or core um, DLL. And so because of that, we can use it anywhere we want, which is pretty great. So now I could take this code I have and I could write a U UWP application on, on top of this. And so that gives me the ability to kind of write once and run all over the place. Now, of course, I'll preference that with the fact that you still have to go write the UWP application over in a platform that supports that. Today, we're going to talk about the Mac. So over here, I have a view controller open up here. And view controllers are the core of a Mac application. A lot of times, your, your window basically draws multiple view controllers. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how you would edit a UI. Because the question was very specifically on the internet, how would you do it like WinForms? And the answer is, the, the interface is pretty much, this, it's very similar in many ways. If you know one, you can learn the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a storyboard file. Now you're probably going, ooh, what's a storyboard file? That sounds scary. It's not really. It's an XML file. If you look at the back end of it, it's literally just XML. And what that is, is it's a layout of your entire UI for your application. All the screens are in one big file. And you can add to your layout by using the editor that's built in to, uh, on a Mac. Now this is an Apple product, Xcode uh, interface builder. But uh, Visual Studio for Mac, anytime you make a new UI component, it will automatically write the C Sharp class for you in Visual Studio for Mac. So you're going to go over to Xcode, you're going to build your UI, and when you close Xcode, it dynamically will build the starter classes in C Sharp. That's pretty great. So if we go look at the main storyboard file right quick here for this application, you can see here that um, if I zoomed out, you'd see that there's just a ton of screens in this thing. There's a lot going on. But I'm actually going to focus on a couple screens over here. One. I've got this screen that's going to come up by default. 
it's got a split view in it, like a master detail kind of. Over on the left side, we're going to see that there's a, a list of different things you could do. On the right side, you'll see a form. And then at the bottom, I have some buttons that I can dynamically switch the view. So I'll, I'll give you a demo of, say, for example, we have this, um, one of these views is like, say, for example, I want to make a user profile. So I'm going to mock this out. And I'm going to add a label to this so we can see it dynamically. So I'm going to click the little plus sign up here. I'm going to search for a label. And I'm looking for a wrap label specifically. The reason for that is I don't know how much text is going to be on this control, for example. I'm just not really sure. Now, the cool thing about this is as I dragged over the labels, you saw some blue lines. Those are the interface builder telling you what's the best way to make the UI look decent. The, the editor is actually pretty good about warning you that, hey, you're doing you're, you're drawing just the right amount for like your width. So you can see here, I've got a blue bar over here that's telling me, don't go any further than this because this is a good place to go. So now in Xcode, in this builder, there is something called constraints. I'm not going to get into the huge argument about whether or not constraints are good or bad. I personally don't think they're all that tricky or difficult. I'm going to use the constraint editor to actually add some constraints into this so that um, basically it's going to go through and standardize my UI. I'm going to make the spacing on the left and right 20 pixels. I'll make it 8 at the top. And I'll make it, uh, for example, I'll just make it 20 on the bottom. I'm going to add these four constraints. And now this label is all set up. Now the last thing you have to do is, in the label, there's some options over here in Xcode you're going to see to the right. And you can set all kinds of options about how your, your text um, goes through and works. And you can see here, we want to make sure it's set to word wrap because we don't know how much text is going to go on the screen. So with this, I'm done with this UI. So the, oh, excuse me, one last thing I need to do. I need to link this. This is the, I'll say that this is the trickiest part that some people will get confused when they're building an application. In order to do this, I need to link this label I drew out and threw onto the form. I need to link that into my C-sharp code file. This, I will fully admit, is the first time you do it, it seems like it's crazy. But once you do it the first time, it becomes second nature. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to split the screen using the right icon here. And then here, I have a basically two windows open simultaneously in Xcode. So I'm going to actually go in and find my user um, profile controller. And I'm looking for the header file, it's called. And what I'm going to do is I need to drag out what we call an outlet or a pointer to the label I just drew so it shows up in my C-sharp code. And so I'm going to go back and find my little label I have right here. It's right there. I've got it selected. I'm going to hold down a key on my Mac keyboard, and I'm going to drag, and that's the control key. When I let go, it's going to ask me, what kind of pointer do you want to create? Well, I know it's a text field, so I'm going to just call it text field. And I'll call it bio. I'm going to hit connect. And at this point in time, when I close this editor, that is going to turn into a C-sharp variable for me. And that sounds like it's like crazy and unbelievable, but it's true. And so I'm going to go through here. Visual Studio should update itself. And if the demo gods don't kill me, I will actually have this, and it will work. Now, we can check that. Each one of these view controllers has a designer file behind it. And that's where Visual Studio puts its uh, C-sharp uh, references that it makes. And so if I were to go into the user one and take a look here, we should see a new field. And I see it right here, TF bio. That tells me that that field was now created in my C-sharp file. Well, now based on that, what I, all I have to do to wire this up is basically um, set the value. So in the view to load, which is if you've done iOS, you're very uh, used to this method showing up. I'm just going to say um, the text field bio dot string value equals, and I'm going to say my user object, and I have a bio field on it. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and debug. And when I debug, this should go through and build my Mac application. Now, here's another fun fact about the new version of Visual Studio that most people don't know. Uh, we are talking about key bindings earlier. Everyone's talking about those are a hot topic. I actually use something different. I use an editor called VS Vim. It's a plugin for VS for Mac. And that editor actually is the same one for Windows. And so there's a guy on the, uh, the compiler team named uh, Jared. And there's a, a person on the, C -sharp, or the F Sharp team named Jason. And they wrote this so that it's cross-platform. It works both in Windows and Mac, which means now we're getting to the point where extensions are available on both platforms, the same extension, which is just amazing. Um, and it's really showing that where VS for Mac is going and how you're going to be able in the future be able to do more things like this, where I'm a VI guy. I started years ago in Unix writing code. And so my, my fingers are kind of programmed to those key bindings, and I don't want to give them up. And so the fact that this extension is now available is pretty cool. So we're going to wait for a few seconds here while this loads. The other thing I wanted to point out is a lot of times somebody asks me, well, how did I learn this? How did I find out like how MS image, uh, NS image looks, right? 
Well, that's pretty easy. You can right click and go to go to declaration. What it should do is it should bring up the assembly browser. And that's a pretty neat feature. It shows you the breakdown of the NS uh, image, for example. And this is all the way to the top of what we call AppKit, which is the built-in framework for this. But here's the crazy part. If you want to see the C sharp code for that, if you go to language here, all you have to do is switch it to C sharp. And now you're seeing the literal code behind this. So if you've ever wanted to see how Xamarin binding works, which is what this is, there's the code to do that, which is really kind of neat. It's a great feature. And anytime I'm trying to figure out something, I either go to the Microsoft documentation or I use this feature. So finally, I'm going to go into my uh, app. It's up here running. This is a full Mac application. And you can see here, I've got a, a endpoint linked up. And if I click on it, it shows up. And I can make new ones if I want. The feature I was working on was this user profile. So I'm going to click these little buttons down here. And when I click user profile, you'll see there's John. <laughs> you see his title. You can see that his, uh, he works for the Fidget Studio for Mac team. And you can see that I have Lipsum Norum up there. And that's just because I needed some text to put in for his bio. And if I switch back the authentication mode, you see the windows are dynamically switching in real time. So this, the, the, the cool thing about this to understand is that I'm actually messaging between all these different screens using C sharp code and using a standard uh, format called like a messaging framework. So I'm sending messages back and forth between the screens to tell them how to dynamically update. That is the power of using Visual Studio for the Mac to build a Xamarin based application. And once again, I built this literally in less than two days just based on somebody on Twitter asking if this is humanly possible. So it's, it's really a great platform for building even this. And if you have Windows Forms, you have um, a background maybe in WPF or UWP, it's very easy for you to pick this up without problems. So I think that that's what I'm going to do here for my demo. And I will throw it back over to John and Jeff. That was cool. All right. <laughs> I like knowing that we can build apps for every platform, mm -hmm. desktop, web, mobile, really great stuff. Yep. It yeah, really it's great is. to have you know a, a general, general purpose language that can do all build all kinds of apps, can be performant enough to build like really fast tight microservices, can build you know like large applications, can build. But I, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Um, oh my goodness. Um, friends there on Twitch, you may have just seen this. Our friend Lana Lux is rating with oh a party of 150. <laughs> Welcome in, 150 raiders. Good to see you out there. Wow. My name is Jeff Fritz. That's John Galloway. Hello. This is a code party. We're asking trivia. We're giving away stuff. We're giving away stuff. You picked a great place to you raid. You picked a great place. Lana, thank you so much <laughs> for bringing your viewers over here to us. Thank you so much. Um, we know our friend Lana is out there. She's, she spends uh, her days working with Unity and writing .NET code, mm -hmm. building games. She's building models for her games using Maya. Tremendous, wow. uh, just complete package that she's working through there to build games. We saw about Unity earlier today with we Visual did. Studio we for did. Mac. Yep, that was, that was one of the presentations. Um, so that was really cool seeing using C Sharp skills and Absolutely. using Visual Studio for Mac as, as an advanced editor. So, yeah. Very cool. See, the, and we're, the, the folks are behind the door there. Seth Warren is just, making faces at us. That's what he can't get away from the guy. <sighs> what, now seriously? he's coming in. We we can't get this. I can't work under these conditions. He just spilled a coke on the ground. I was a Dr Pepper. Oh, okay. To oh, be yeah. fair, a diet Dr Pepper. How you doing there, friend? Yeah. I don't drink coke. If we give you some stickers, yes, we go away. Would you? Here's your sticker pack. <laughs> Seth Warren's, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we got more stuff to give away. We do. We, um, I mean, I don't want to stress out, but we've got way too much stuff to give away. We've We're got, gonna be just why like, don't we crank through three in a row? Back. Three in a row, back to yeah, back yeah, to yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, next question I have from Octopus. Octopus Deploy, right? They make uh, continuous deployment systems, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and so they're giving a license for their Octopus Cloud server for 25 targets. So nice. All right. And it's a $2,300 value, so you'll okay. be able to deploy all over the place. We had a few people asking, is this a live show? So I just have to say, yes, it's a live show. No, this is totally not live. Oh, yeah. This is pre-recorded. It's actually from the future. We're broadcasting yes. back in time. Back right. in yeah. time. We went 88 miles an hour, oh, yes. and here we are. All right, Le uh, uh, Octopus, are Octopus, let's give Rich away. PK. Yes, from Octopus, we have this question. First person to answer it in the chat room is going to win the big prize. And our friends at Octopus have to say, hang on, hang on, hang on. Suspense. Uh, the suspense is killing, killing me. killing all of us. 
There it is. What popular macOS package manager is Octopus Deploy looking to support on its product roadmap? So you're going to need to do a little bit of research here to figure out which. Not so, oh, it's do so we, the that uh, it's so close. Oh, the day one. Daryl Code Stuff. Daryl Code Stuff. There, we needed the full name. Homebrew. Full, na full name, sorry. Yeah. Is it Daryl Homebrew? Homebrew. Daryl Code Stuff. Daryl Code Stuff. Yes, you do. And now you're going to deploy that stuff using Octopus Deploy. Fantastic. Breakfast of Champions. The Breakfast of Champions. Is Really? I don't know. Oct <laughs> is Calamari <laughs> the Breakfast of Champions? Uh, that could be a thing. Uh, next trivia question we have from Progress Software. They make components, tools yep. that you can use to help build your application. This is a question for a, a DevCraft Complete license. Do I have that right? Yep, yep. So every one of the controls that they make. Wow. Yeah, right? Doesn't matter then what platform you're targeting, yeah. there's controls for you. Progress asks, in the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core documentation, you'll find a first steps on Visual Studio for Mac Getting Started Guide. Which control is implemented in the use case scenario demo in that documentation? Wow. First person to answer that correctly in the Twitch chat room is going to get, no, PHP is not the answer. Uh, we uh, have a few folks answers. saying grid. I and nope, the judges that's say not the right that answer. That is not the no, right, not the right answer. It's a classic. It is absolutely a classic control that, that the folks at Telerik are known for. I'm going to peek over here at what the answer is. <gasps> Do you know what the answer is? I know what the answer is. I and nobody's answer. answering it yet. Nope, it's not answered yet. I need a specific control. It is not SharePoint Hugo <laughs> doll. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is not a chart. Ooh, there we go. Oh, somebody got it. Exoration. Exoration got it. Wow. Look at that. Exoration is cleaning up today. Exoration. It was the date picker. Wow. Is the first control that they show you in their getting started docs. No, it's not homebrew. <laughs> oh, gosh. You gotta catch up. Oops, this is a live show. Hit refresh there. You're you're a little behind. If you're watching on a phone, I yeah. will give it this tip. If you're watching Twitch on a phone, mm -hmm. you're gonna be a little bit behind. Yeah. To, you, uh, you gotta be that much smarter. Yeah. That, yeah. So you you need to think into the future. Next question for the last of these three that we're gonna ask is from our friends at Preemptive. Mm -hmm. They make uh, they make all kinds of Right, they make um, DocuSkater. Yes, and they they're basically off. And I think that they they're doing uh, they're going to the Mac. They've got a beta to the Mac. Oh, fantastic! They have a beta version of the product for the Mac. They're giving away it looks like a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. Nice. First person to answer this question correctly in the chat room from Preemptive asks. Which version of DotFuscator Professional would you use to protect your Xamarin applications on a Mac? Right inside Visual Studio for Mac. That's pretty cool. Right? Protect it, get it obfuscated so that folks can't interact with that. Golden yep. as the answer is not 271. But it was hmm. close. Close. She's trying to win. Look at this. The, the crew was trying to win prizes. Oh, I the don't SharePoint know. edition is even closer. Wow, no. SharePoint. Good, Here go. Hugo 4.2.139. No. no. I don't think that's it either. It's, it's just a random number generation here. Right? I think they're going to be calling it rigged soon. We have right, uh, no, nobody's infinite, calling this rigged. And an infinite it is not amount of monkeys. Not pi either. You know, technically it would oh, take an infinite amount of time. But pi is even closer. E is E the e. answer. No. no points. Keep going. Seven, keep eight, going. Seven, eight, Ooh, we're two. getting, OK. We're, Folks are learning how to count. It's totally, totally rigged. It's totally rigged, no, yes. Rigged. <laughs> it, this is not rigged. Come on now. Let's back up a second. <sighs> keep We've been going. working on this. <laughs> we know the real answers here. What's the Do we, question? I actually don't know the, the real answer. The question's right there we at know the bottom the answer. of the screen. Look, it's right we know the answer. here below us. Yes, I see the uh, answer. It's a full number. Oh, we got it. There we go. At Ricky. Ricky 3C. 6.0. 6.0. Well done. That's Dot a big Skater version 6. number. We'll get you a $50 Amazon gift card. Thank you so much for wow. participating. And, uh, you know what? Actually, Ricky that was cool. I, I didn't know that there was support on Visual Studio for Unreal. Mac, for Xamarin, that's pretty cool. Yes, yes, yes. So we Look said we were this. giving away three things. So those were we three things. Th oh, that was three? That but was. I, I wonder if you should do the other trivia too, the for the mugs and stuff. Well, yeah, we should. Okay. Let's we, run through that trivia because we have mugs, shirts, and, and um, stickers. 
So, so no, we but have we were your going choice? to change the rules for this one because you guys had more to give away. Dee Dee's we changing it up. Yeah, we're going to change it up. I thought that All we right. were going to do like, because we don't have oh, as many yes, yes. questions, like mm -hmm. each time the first three answers will win. How's I was that? thinking the same thing. Okay, yep. first Oh my three. gosh! I was, I was that like... That was a mind meld, wasn't it? was, it? Yep, right yep, there, yep. yep. <laughs> First three answer, and we have like four or five of these questions, right? So um, each one of them wins. We have five questions. Okay. That, that I made up. Okay. So these are questions about various things in the Mac ecosystem. For these ones, let's give them a way, let's give them a mug. Okay. First one we'll give a mug to. So first the, three folks. First three folks to answer this question, which is... What year did Visual Basic for Mac launch? Is that a thing? What do you visual mean? Basic of course it's a Mac. thing. It's Visual Basic. <laughs> do oh, we you got know? Visual Basic is like, is like a credit card. I'll tell Everywhere you, visual, I want to be. Oh, look, visual there's Basic lots was of years the first showing code that. I got, yeah. The first oh, Beer Admore got close. Very close. Beer Admore. Oh, so close. <laughs> 1066 AD. Ooh. I like it. The Battle no. of Hastings. That one's yeah. close, too. Y2K. Y2K. No. Oh, 19 1993 is even closer. Wow. Ex except that. It's not. No. I just threw up a little bit thinking That's about That's even baby closer. Oh, on. Visual <laughs> Basic is a beautiful Gone language. Gomez is like... No year. Beer Admore. Where? Well, well... Oh, Beer Admore. Huh? I think. That's close. What do you mean that's close? Didi makes the rules. Okay. She just... Didi is the judge and adjudicator. I mean, I, don't you think... Oh, Carnegie, and then we got a nil, so Carn... Carnegie J. That's a good one. But <laughs> is that the right answer? I need, I need my Jeopardy sound well, effect, so sound music. Oh, the T Pro Senior. T Pro Senior. It never launched. And yeah. Hugo Dahl. Just above. So it. I think actually T Pro Senior wins. And because, Carnegie J. Well, there's your three. It was yeah, those three. Because it was a product that Wait, never. Wait, so so who won? So you, I gotta I gotta write this. The down. The Hugo Dahl, T Pro Senior, and the Hugo. Hugo and Dahl. Carnegie J. Yep. Um, there you go. There's your three. Hang on. And what was the other, what was the second one? Uh, T, T Pro Senior, Hugo Dahl, and Carnegie J. There you go. It never launched. It never happened. So, but it was a thing. It just didn't ship. Never shipped. Can you believe it? What? And we were privileged to talk to Dee Dee, who worked on this product. So yes. In 1993. Yeah. The Visual Basic team, of which I was a member. We worked hard to launch, to uh, build a Visual Basic for Mac, and we had customers lined up and everything. And then somebody who will not be mentioned, but might have been the CEO of the company, <laughs> said no. So we did not launch. Them. Wow! So it never launched. Uh, I guess they get to mug me. for donuts with Dee Dee Walsh. Says Hugo. There you Dull. go. There you go. Now we need to give away some stickers. All right, so sticker Let's packs. say like 10 people. First 10 to get this right. Okay, okay let's give them that question. So the next question, um, that one's too easy. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to this one because it, this, uh, yeah. Here we go. This question is, what year did the Macintosh finally get multitasking? Wow. First 10 to get this right. It is so rigged. Schwad yes. boom. Um, so First to lose. First 10? First 10. Holy crap. I know, okay. that's going to be hard. You know that I have to... Uh, you have to write have really fast. I have to write fast. all of these down really fast, so... Well, um... That's fine. Oh, actually, I think I see that answer coming in. What's the, what's the question? What, what year, year did multitasking? Oh. Oh, there was one. Yeah, there's, there's actually a bunch, a bunch now coming Wait, in. Wait, I saw one way up there. Yeah. So, Luis. the first one I saw was Lu Luis Beltran. Ber yeah. And then that name sounds familiar. Cloud Coops, and then Otami. Daryl Codes. Thomas. Nexixt. We need like a scribe. Yeah, I think we've got our ten. We'll, that looks like ten. We will go through the chat log here yeah. and narrow it down. Can I go down. through the chat log after the fact? Yes, we can. So, we will yeah. narrow it down. It is 1987. 1987. Yeah. How there do I go. go through the chat log after the fact? Yeah, Luis we, was a, a .NET Conf speaker. That's why I recognize that name. We Good can, to see you. We can save this. The chat, chat log, log is already saved. Oh, sweet. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right, then keep we've going. We've got that and covered. Let's give away some shirts. Okay. This one, I think we need to go a little bit further and go with the hard question, the fifth question that you gave me, the last question that we had to rephrase. Oh, yeah, that one's a good one. Okay. Top five people? 
We can do for top five who get this correct. This is a naming question. Okay. All right. I better Which been... astronomer is codenamed Butthead Astronomer? Are you kidding me? After throwing a fit when the Max 7100 team originally codenamed their project <laughs> after him. What astronomer was codenamed Butthead Astronomer? I, does, does anyone Notice check these? Notice it's not Beavis Astronomer. Does anyone read these after Dee Dee puts them in? Or we just, we just read whatever she says. <laughs> I can copy paste into OBS. <laughs> oh, we've gotten like a bunch of right. Oh, oh there first. they come. We've oh, and it's them. only the top three, right? Exoration. We've got plenty of folks that have it. Yes. error and Coral Cloud Segan. Koopa. Cloud Koopa. We've got billions and billions of correct answers now. Wow. Okay. So we've got a bunch of t-shirts we've given out. A couple mugs, stickers. Yep. Okay. Do we want to talk shop a bit more? So there's plenty of shop to talk about. There is. So... Um, well, I want to talk about. Yes. You've got something coming up in May. May is for Max, something like oh, that. Oh well, so okay, I've got a couple different things like that All coming right. up, right? Talk to me. So uh, I like, uh, folks. You've seen me here on the stream. You know where I am here on Twitch. I am C Sharp Fritz on Twitch. You can't shout me out. There is no JavaScript horses today. It's <laughs> it's just John and I here. Um, and uh, I like to I like to shake things up when I'm doing .NET programming on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Just doing Visual Studio 2019 on Windows all the time, it, it's really not showing everything that we can do with .NET. Part of what's cool about .NET is it runs on every platform. You can develop it on just about every platform, and people still don't know that. And yeah. I love that you are working hard to get that message out there. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we've run in October the past two years. We've run Ubuntu Tober. It, yeah. it, it works, okay? <laughs> it, look, it's better than Ubuntember <laughs> or Ubuntalai, okay? Ubuntober. It works. Trust me on this, okay? So we run Where's Ubuntu. Where's that trombone? Uh, the sad trombone's right yeah. up there. So um, all month long, Ubuntu Linux, Visual Studio Code, and showing, hey, we can do .NET development, ASP.NET Core, .NET Core development, in this other environment. Yep. And we spend May is for Macs, all yeah. through May, on a Mac, Visual Studio for Mac, Visual Studio Code, building, it. I'm a web person, so I build web applications. Yep. Um, we've been building Blazor stuff recently, but we really looked at it, it, a lot of folks that are out there on Twitter over the past, over the past few days, and they've been saying, you know what, gosh, .NET really is a Visual Studio and Windows only thing. So that's not going to fly. Yeah. We need to really break this down and show, look, we can do .NET everywhere. So I threw out the idea of let's do minimal march. Uh, let's go .NET on the command line only. Yep. Let's go with Vim. And let's do everything on the command line so it's all text. Look at this. I've got over on the other side. <laughs> you got some <laughs> Big thumbs up. So we're going to do... All through March, I don't want to do just Vim and on the command line, but let's show some of the other things that we can do. Mm -hmm. let's, let's show WPF on .NET Core. Mm -hmm. let's, let's show a little Xamarin. Let, let's really get around and show some of these other cool things that we can do with .NET because yeah. I, th I don't think folks really appreciate all of the amazing things that folks are doing with .NET, whether it's on a Raspberry Pi or on a little IoT device or on a big cloud surface mm -hmm. doing artificial intelligence or right the desktop apps that we have uh, folks running little apps to to put uh, uh, gifs and mpegs up on the screen behind them i don't know anybody who does that <laughs> um, but let's really look at all the cool things that folks can do with dotnet let's celebrate them yep so, in the theme of Max, yes. you've got the May thing. Absolutely. So, May, all month in May, all through the month, we are on the Mac developing with Visual Studio for Mac. Yep. So, watch. Well, first of all, if you're watching this and you're like, what do I do next? Download Visual Studio for Mac. I mean, that's, you know, that's part of what this is all about. Two is <clears throat> watch Visual Studio for Mac Twitter handle and the Visual Studio blog. We're going to be publishing all these videos later this week along with code and the, um, the slides. And we're also going to tell you how you can run your own local event, and we will send you swag, including stickers and t-shirts and stuff to give away at your local event. So we'd love to get in touch with local meetups that are doing, the, you know, that are using Macs, and also uh, companies. You know, if your company is like very, has a big group of developers using Mac, mm. put on a local event, and we'll send you some swag. 
Absolutely. So, yeah. Let me take a look back at the chat room here. Let's uh, let's see what some of these folks have said to us. Um, <laughs> you struck a chord with the minimal march, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Right here. Look, Carnegie J. Wow. Big thumbs up for that. Uh, T Pro Senior. Uh, we used it to go .NET on Linux. Look at that. Right. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, folks are suggesting that during March, um, let's limit discussion to FidoNet forums. Hmm. Might be a little tricky. Yeah, maybe bring in Usenet. Maybe. I I'm, yeah. I, I'm gonna have to get out my 56k modem. Get dialed up there. <laughs> right. Um, uh, here, here we go. ASP Nerd right away is saying. We use Visual Studio for Mac and have sessions. So this is for future events. We're not saying like. Hey, because you did a thing, we want you to actually use the swag to promote your event, to get Absolutely. people to show up, to give away as prizes and stuff. So that's so, the idea, including the mugs. Very so cool. cool. All, right. All right, let's do three, give away some stuff. Let's do three trivia, okay. and then um, of the sponsors, then do one of yours, and then we'll do the grand prize from um, the okay. Uno guys. Uno. So I Sounds have question good. number seven from Aim High. Now, so Aim High is kind of cool because what you you realize what they're doing? They're enabling the tribes to be able to take more uh, to take advantage to get employed in. Um, These are Native Americans, yeah. Native North Americans. Wow. Yeah, to get employed, uh, you know, in really, tech. Yeah, yeah, they're training them up and doing a bunch of that kind of stuff. Very cool. So that's cool. what Aim High is about, and and they work with the Spokane tribe. Um, so go ahead. And, and their question is. What type of housing did the Spokane tribe Indians traditionally build? And this is for a t-shirt. This is for, okay, this is for a t-shirt, a HIPAA complete t-shirt it says here. All right. Very nice. So from Aim High Pro, take a look at the chat room. People are asking for a link to. Um, it won't I, help them. It will not help them. It will not help them. Well, they just want to know. You I'm going to copy and know. paste. Just start with a w. Uh, no, but somebody, oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. There you go, there's I, I a link. I think I know the answer to this. Um, you know what, someone, I kind of got it. Nah, let's get it correct. Um. Um. Uh, I mean, Well, uh, okay, I think Hugo has Hugo it. Hugo got it. Yeah. I'd say Hugo got it. Yep. The longhouse? Wooden longhouse. A wooden longhouse. longhouse. Yep. All right. There we go. Well played. Next one is from Nostis. What are we giving away from Nostis? We're giving away Document Studio Professional License, right? Nostis Document Studio Professional License, and it includes, um, I'm not seeing the complete thing here. Uh, it includes Xamarin Document Viewer Control. Oh, nice, nice. All right, and the question is, when was the first public release of Visual Studio for Mac made? Hmm. I don't think it was 1987. No. So you can start counting up from there. We're, but don't count backwards from now. We're, okay, we got it. Wow. Hugging, hucking fackers. Hucking fackers. Got that one correct. I, I okay. So I've seen hucking, in uh, and right. He, they're on a first name basis with, uh. with me, and. Uh, I, I always think twice before I pronounce their name. Yeah. Well done. Yes, I say that, that very carefully, T Pro careful. Senior. All right, what do we got now? Sync Fusion. So, Sync our friends Fusion. at Sync Fusion, they make controls as well. Yep. They Which, by the way, I just love that about the .NET ecosystem, especially lately, with things like you've got Xamarin for controls. Sure. You've also got Blazor now with yep. controls. Mm -hmm. um, it's We've really, had WPF and WinForms. Exactly. I think that's really like a. a really cool part of the whole .NET ecosystem. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, if you want to build it all yourself, you want to write all your own code or pull in open source, that's cool. If you want to pay and get a professionally developed product with professional support and all that, there is a huge amount of really great tools out there. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, they're high quality and they're going to make your application look great. Yep. And so, did you tell them that the Sync Fusion is offering a $50 Amazon gift card? I should tell them that. I think you should. <laughs> okay, go Sync ahead. Syncfusion is offering a $50 Amazon gift card. Thank you very much, Syncfusion. There you go. All right. All right. Their question for us is... Holy crap. In Visual Studio for Mac, how do you add NuGet packages from custom Ooh. NuGet feeds? Yeah. That's a good question. That's a, that's a tough one. 
And this is this is a really long answer. <laughs> it's a really long answer. <laughs> and you must get it word for word. <laughs> this is a really long read, answer. Read the docs um, on SharePoint. Thank I, you, Hugo. Hugo always comes through with the SharePoint. I know, right? <laughs> Re right? Hugo with the SharePoint. Uh, let me. <laughs> Which one? You, you just match the soundboard? Just back up <laughs> the SharePoint, all right? We'll in, get there. In the settings. This is a. Um, ooh, with homebrew. Dan? Interesting. Dan Siegel. Dan's close. Is Dan, what about Dan? I mean. Oh, look at Beer Admore. No, no, it's a custom feed is the key. Oh, there we go. Is Beer Admore the? No, Brow RP. <laughs> so we have a code demonstration in the studio from Aaron. But Brow RP, I think, has it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that is good. Brow RP. The, interesting. There are people showing also the command line, which works. But uh, in but Visual Studio for Mac is the correct. Key. Yep. The the key here was in Visual Studio for Mac. So who yeah. won it? A Brow RP. B R O W R P. Yep. All right. Awesome. So we've given away a whole bunch of prizes here. There's w the one more that we were going to give away from Uno. Yep. Are we, are we, we're nearing the end of it here anyway. We actually are. We're supposed to They're end gonna up. They're going to kick us out We have here. one minute. I'm sorry, we're out of time. We can't give away the giant I'd like to prize. thank Matt Damon. I'm sorry <laughs> we had to bump him again today. <laughs> well played. Um, so this is, this is the final question. The, the final question. And the prize is a cool one from Uno Platform. Uh, it is. The prize from Uno is. A Ruko. That's the. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? An F-11 Pro Drone 4K quadcopter? What? Are you kidding? Is this rigged? Because I would like that. Can I know, right? I mean, you might. You guys all might have to beat down to get and it. And C-Sharp Fritz has the correct answer. Yeah, Good night, everybody! Wow, congratulations! <laughs> all right, fine. We will ask the question. All right. Yes, huge prize, Jeff's Code Party hat. Actually, <laughs> we give those away over on my channel. Mm -hmm. um, so this question from Uno. First person to get this question right will get the quadcopter. People are already guessing SharePoint. I just oh, wanna, that, well, yeah. that's super are they, close. Are oh, they guessing SharePoint or rigged? Rigged. All right, here we go. Uh, 47. <laughs> the question is, in addition to Windows, where else can Windows uh, Calculator run thanks to Uno Platform? This is a really good question. So Windows and no, calculator. it's not SharePoint. No, 42, wrong. So the answer I'm just going to tell you is a few places. You can't list just one. Gonaz is not quite oh, wait, right. Wait, what does Dan, Dan Siegel, Siegel say? Uh, is that all of them? I think Dan Siegel has Dan it. Dan Siegel. Now, listen to this. Our director is in the other room <laughs> yelling, I got it right! Uh, d uh, how many of us feel like we should award it to Dan Siegel? I think Dan I Siegel. Think so, yeah. Yes, the answer is uh, what was Mac, it? Mac, browser, iOS, Android. Yep. Yep. Did, uh, there you go, Dan Siegel. He got it right. All right. Right. Hey, I, I don't have a celebration song. There we go. So you know what? Dan lives near me. I'm gonna. Does he? I'm gonna. You can just let's hang drive out it on and, over? and we can fly that drone together. I want to oh, see this. Oh man! Thing go. So can you can you bring that to TwitchCon and just fly it around over the event? Just maybe. Freak out some of the people there. Get wow. them a little bit. This was uh, another fast code party. It was. We went through. I think we I think we gave away all of our prizes. Very quick. Very very oh fast. Oh my gosh! Yes. We're just throwing just them out. Throw stuff at people. Uh, Dan says, let's do lunch and we can go there you fly. Go. There you go. All right. I want pictures. I think so. All right. Get that on your Instagram. Hey, we're supposed to do every Microsoft presentation needs call to action. The call to action for you today is um, sign up for John's Instagram so you can see the drone flying. Yes. Right. Download Visual Studio for Mac. Download Visual Studio for Mac. Install Visual Studio for Mac. Yes. Eat a donut. Eat, Eat a, a donut. donut. Yes. Build something cool with Visual Studio for Mac. Get ready for May. Get ready for May is for Macs. Yep. 
click that follow button. You're here on the Visual Studio channel. Make sure you're following the Visual Studio channel. Yes, the Visual Studio channel, and we actually have a Visual Studio Mac channel. So, and we, we can put that in, in the thing as well. But if you're, I mean, so both are cool to follow, but Visual Studio Mac channel, we actually, we've got what, 2,200 followers now? I mean, this is where you will get your specific to, yeah, sorry, Visual Studio Mac Twitter, sorry. Okay. Yep, so I'm putting that little link in. And we probably should end soon because I have to pee. Okay, well, we I should totally end. I think that's a show. All right, do Thank we you like, so much, play everybody. some music or something? Uh, We're done? Wait, we, look at the lights going, oh my goodness. That's a party. Why can, Thank you so much. Why didn't they tell us? We could have had that going the whole time. I know. Take care, everybody. We will see you for, we've got .NET Conf with Xamarin coming up in just a few weeks. Yeah. We'll see you then. All right. Good job, you guys. Woo!